Ever wondered why your house is timber, but your neighbors is light gauge too? Or why the office down the street is concrete, while the supermarket uses steel and concrete panels? Today we're diving into Australia's main construction methods and how they work, all from a structural engineer's perspective. We're going to break down the main construction methods Australia uses into four key materials. Timber, steel, concrete, and mainstream. First up, let's talk about timber construction. When most Australians think of a house, they're probably imagining something built with timber. This is your classic lightweight timber framing. We're talking about timber studs for walls, joists for floors, and prefabricated trusses for roofs. It's essentially a skeleton of timber pieces nailed or screwed together. Walls are typically lined with plasterboard and often have brick veneer or lightweight cladding on the outside. Often it is the most economical choice for single-story and double-story houses, if there's no shortage of timber, of course, and the vast majority of our builders and trades have a strong carpentry background. They're intimately familiar and confident working with timber, which leads to efficient construction. From a design standpoint, timber framing in Australia has a great advantage for engineers because we have really detailed Australian standards like AS 1684 and AS 2870. Think of these codes like a comprehensive cookbook. It's like engineering for dummies. I love it. So for a standard typical house, these codes gives us clear instructions which makes the design process super efficient. And that often means lower engineering fees for those types of homes. We're gonna charge you less because we spend less time designing them. But be aware that this cookbook isn't much help for those fantastic modern homes with big open areas or unique features. For those designs, we need to do much more custom from scratch engineering. So naturally that requires more work. So expect the engineering fees to be a little bit higher. So if you're dreaming of a cutting edge home, your engineer will be doing a lot more than just following a recipe, of course. We often have to work within a specific floor depth between 300 and 400 millimeters. And this is dictated by ceiling heights and the overall building dimensions. So the challenge for us is to fit the floor beams and joists within that space. So if a timber beam needs to be too deep to span a large distance, we will often need to introduce steel beams and steel columns. So now it becomes a combination of materials, not only timber anymore. People often complain about floor vibration. Structural engineers check for potential vibrations in residential floors by applying a one kilonewtons point load, which is about the weight of a person, in the middle of a structural element. If the deflection is greater than one or two millimeters, then vibration might be an issue. It's not the most precise method, but it's a cost-effective approach to keep the design fees manageable. If you are building a new house and zero bounceness is a top priority for you, make sure you communicate that to your engineer up front because we can design for that. Now, timber is not just for houses. The world of mass timber is rapidly changing what's possible. We're talking about engineered timber products like cross laminated timber, glued laminated timber and laminated veneer lumber. These aren't just planks, they are high performance, large scale timber elements. So mass timber is like the residential timber that went to the gym and took some steroids. From an engineering perspective, mass timber is incredibly exciting. It has a great strength to weight ratio. So a huge engineering advantage of mass timber is its strength to weight ratio. It can rival concrete and steel for most story buildings and long spans, but with a significant weight advantage. Not always, but it can. This means lighter foundations and even the exciting possibility of adding new timber floors on top of existing concrete buildings without needing massive upgrades. Beyond all the technical benefits, there's one pro of mass timber that's particularly appealing to me personally, which is 
aesthetics. When you leave that timber exposed, it creates this incredibly beautiful, warm and natural interiors. In my opinion, it adds so much character and it often means you don't need a lot of additional finishes, which is a win-win. One of the most challenging aspects of this type of construction is getting the connections right between these large elements, which requires some engineering and construction expertise and often bespoke steel connectors. Structural engineers will use codes like AS1720 for timber design and also some manufacturer design guides. So where are you finding mass timber? You're gonna find them in mid-rise commercial buildings, apartment complexes, universities, and public buildings, and some high-end architectural houses. All right, moving on from timber, let's talk about steel construction. Steel is another powerhouse material in Australia. It's incredibly versatile and used everywhere from small homes to or tallest skyscrapers. It comes in a couple of main forms and each has its own engineering story. So first we have light gauge steel framing. This is essentially thin cold formed steel sections shaped like a C or a U that get screwed together. Think of it as a direct alternative to lightweight timber framing for residential or smaller commercial buildings. From an engineer's perspective, light gauge steel offers some fantastic advantage because they're often prefabricated off-site, which speeds up the construction process. And also steel doesn't warp, shrink or swell with chains in moisture content like timber, which leads to very straight walls and precise construction. It's hard to make chains on site though. It isn't as simple as cutting a piece of timber. Sometimes if something goes wrong on site, you might have to reorder material from the manufacturer. They're also stronger and can span further than timber. Really good strength to weight ratio. Structural engineers used specialized software to design light gauge steel framing. We use manufacturer guides, AS4600 code formed steel structures and the Nash design guides. So where will you typically find light gauge steel framing? It is a popular choice for residential homes, some commercial buildings like schools, or for internal partitions in large commercial buildings. Now, when we talk about structural steel framing, we're moving into the realm of the big boys. This is the heavy stuff, those massive UBs, UCs, PFCs, and complex trusses that you see forming the skeletons of or high rises, warehouses and stadiums. These components are usually rolled in a factory and then bolted or welded together on site. So we have on one side the cold formed lightweight steel framing and on the other side the hot rolled heavy steel members. Let's talk about some benefits of steel. It has an exceptionally high strength to weight ratio which allows for long clear spans and very tall structures that would be very difficult or maybe impossible with other materials. Fast erection, because components are fabricated precisely off-site, then on-site assembly is incredibly fast. You receive a beam and a column, you bolt them together, pretty much like a heavy, really expensive IKEA set. The main design code for steel in Australia is AS4100. So where do you find structural steel framing? It is the go-to for high-rise buildings, large industrial warehouses, commercial complexes, and iconic structures like stadiums and bridges. And we also use them a lot in residential projects where timber beams and columns are not adequate. All right, we talked about timber and steel now let's move on to concrete, the rock star of the construction world. Literally, it's a rock that we make. Rock star. You guys don't get my engineering jokes, hey? Whatever. We'll separate between cast in place reinforced concrete and precast panels. So first up, we have cast in place or reinforced concrete. This is what most people picture when they think of concrete construction. So it's a liquid concrete 
been poured on site into form work and then reinforced with some steel rebars. From a structural engineer's perspective, cast in place concrete is a fantastic material for many reasons. Number one, fire resistant. Concrete is non combustible and offers excellent fire resistance. It has exceptional compressive strength. It can handle immense crushing forces, which makes it perfect for columns, walls, and footings. Durability. Concrete structures last long, resisting a wide range of environmental conditions, if designed properly, of course. But as with everything, there are engineering challenges we need to manage. So concrete is very heavy, so we need robust footings which can add to the cost. It's time consuming on site. So it takes time to assemble all the formwork, tie the rebar, pour the concrete, and then wait for it to cure and gain strength. This can make the construction process slower on site compared to some other methods. Formwork requirements. All that custom shaping means we need extensive formwork, which is both a material cost and a labor cost. S3600 is the concrete design standard that engineers use in Australia. So where do you find cast-in-place reinforced concrete? You're gonna find it in footings and basements, and it's a primary system for multi-story buildings. So think slabs, columns, shear walls, and it's also vital for infrastructure like bridges and dams. Now let's look at another side of concrete, which is the precast concrete panels. Unlike the cast in place, these elements are manufactured off-site in a controlled factory environment. Once they're done and cured, they are transported to the site and lifted into place. There is another type of construction also that we call teal top panels. And essentially it's a flat concrete panel cast in a horizontal position, which is usually on-site and then they're lifted into place. Some benefits of this method, it has superior quality control because they're made in a factory. Quality control is much tighter, which leads to extremely consistent and high quality finishes. Rapid on-site erection. Once the panels arrive, they can be lifted and installed incredibly quickly, which speeds up the construction schedule. So really good if you're building in a busy area or in the middle of the city. Then we've got reduced on-site labor. Less labor is required on the actual building site for concrete work, which can improve safety and efficiency. The connections between precast panels need very careful engineering to properly transfer the loads. I would say connection design and detailing is one of the most important parts of this type of construction. Also, this type of construction is typically combined with a steel roof framing and also lightweight steel frame for the internal partitions. So we're now working with a combination of construction systems. They're huge in commercial building facades for quick construction of two top warehouses and construction of apartment buildings and retaining walls. It's all about speed, precision and quality control. All right, we've talked about timber, steel and concrete. Our final main structural method is mainstream construction. When we talk mainstream, we're primarily thinking about bricks and blocks laid together with mortar. This is truly ancient building method that has stood the test of time. I mean, the Romans used it. If it's good enough for the Colosseum, it's good enough for your feature wall. It is still incredibly prevalent across Australia. And this includes your classic brickwork, which you see on countless homes, and block work, typically with concrete blocks. This can be used as load-bearing walls, carrying the weight of the structure above, or as non-load-bearing walls, like the outer skin of a brick veneer house, where the timber frame inside does the actual structural work. From a structural engineer's perspective, Mainstreet brings a, a lot of reliable qualities, I would say. It's very strong in compression. Mainstry is incredibly durable and can last for centuries with minimal maintenance. It stands up very well to or varied Australian climate. It has good fire resistance and it's a great replacement for formwork. So instead of building all that formwork to pour a concrete wall, 
for example, you can just lay the blocks. But like all construction methods, there are engineering challenges we factor in. For example, load-bearing masonry walls have limitations on how far they can span. We not only design the bricks to support the self-weight of the structure, but we also must consider out-of-plane and in-plane lateral loads. So imagine the wind or a person pushing a wall. We had to design for these lateral forces as well. Masonry is a brittle material. That means we had to limit the flexions to a quite small value, otherwise the walls crack. And that translates into larger beams, slabs and footings to support the structure. Not to mention that it is quite heavy as well. And of course, it's less flexible for modifications. Once a masonry wall is built, making significant chains or creating new openings is much more difficult and costly compared to a timber or light gauge steel frame. Structural engineers use AS3700 to design mainstream structures and AS4773 to design mainstream in small buildings. So where will you find brick and block mainstream? It's everywhere, from the majority of residential homes, whether it's a full double brick or brick veneer, to low-rise and medium-rise commercial and residential buildings, block retaining walls, and it's fantastic for boundary walls and fire separation walls. When it comes to fire separation between townhouses, for example, while you can technically use timber walls for this, we engineers often prefer concrete block walls because it helps with the lateral stability of the building. So there you have it, a quick tour of Australia's main construction methods and materials. Your role as a structural or site engineer is to understand these methods intimately, how they go together, their nuances, and how to combine them effectively. Often projects are hybrid, using different materials for different parts of the structure to optimize for cost, performance, and aesthetics. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.